Hi beautiful people, today we're talking about abortion. I know this is a very sticky subject, but we have a huge midterm election coming up tomorrow. And I really wanted to inform you guys on why I am a Christian who votes pro-choice. You guys might have guessed this, but I am a liberal Christian who, to quote Texan evangelical Tess Clark, cares as much about babies at the border as I do about babies in the womb. I believe in God and global warming. I believe that God gave us dominion over the earth and we are called to protect the environment. I also believe in God-given free will and autonomy and therefore I vote yes for gay rights. And last but not least, I vote pro-choice. I know pro-choice religious people, pro-life liberals, Christians who have had abortions, and atheists who wouldn't dream of it. So before we even begin, let's just acknowledge that abortion affects so many different people for so many different reasons. That said, for this video, I'll be destroying Ben Shapiro for his black and white oversimplification of one of the grayest topics that I can imagine. The, the abortion debate is really not a particularly complex one. The main reason I'm pro-choice is because abortions will happen whether they're legal or not. During the Great Depression, besides women bleeding to death and botched abortions, people were so desperate financially that some parents killed their children immediately after birth. In this photo, a woman hides her face in shame for selling her children to survive. And this may sound like some archaic distant history, but when you remove options for family planning, people get desperate. Before 1973's Roe v. Wade, between 17 and 18 18% of women were dying in botched abortions. These were either performed at illegal clinics or sometimes by the woman's husband or partner at home. Women will keep having abortions. They'll just be unsafe. It's up to us to use our vote to protect women's health to prevent more abortions. Before we get to Ben Shapiro, it's really important that women be able to kill at any time they please. Let's talk legality. To keep this video under 10 hours, I'm gonna rely on you guys to do this research. First, read up on 1973's Roe v. Wade. This Supreme Court decision made abortion legal until the fetus is viable. Then, you need to grapple with the complications of defining viability. As Americans, we also need to understand why and how the 14th Amendment protects a woman's right to choose. Lastly, consider the individual state restrictions imposed by the Hyde Amendment. Because of the Hyde Amendment, abortion rates are statistically not affected by our presidents. Nearly all challenges to abortion have come at the state level. Statistically, your state and local votes are far more important on the abortion issue. Now, let's talk about what abortion is not. For abortion's best source of lies and overgeneralizations, look no further than Ben Shapiro. No, don't clap. For those who don't know, Ben Shapiro is a conservative political commentator, writer, and lawyer. He often makes the news for his campus lectures in which his fans say he destroys liberal arguments. Besides hating the concept of destroying people who don't agree with your opinion, here are the four reasons Ben Shapiro totally sucks while talking about abortion. One, he's not committed to telling the truth. There's an entire abortion industry that is geared toward teaching women that babies are not babies and that getting, a, and that getting a, a baby aborted is, in fact, a betterment of their life. I can't afford fact checkers, so I'm going to mess up on this channel sometimes. But I love when you guys call me out because I'm not out to preserve my ego. I want to give information. I would rather be credible and humble than be right all the time. I wish Ben Shapiro would hold himself to the same level of accountability and truth that I do, a girl that YouTubes from her bedroom, but he doesn't. I've been told that you're able to kill this baby all the way up to the very end, right? 32 to 30 weeks. I'm gonna stay calm on this video, but Ben Shapiro made me furious when he talked about general abortion while flashing a picture of a partial birth abortion. Here's a warning. I'm gonna show you this video now. That's a human, and that human doesn't have any rights because you just decided its rights are less important than your right to your own convenience. The reason this infuriates me is twofold. One, Ben intentionally misinforms people so they'll believe morally what he wants them to. This makes him a dishonest advocate of his cause. This misleading is the same reason I don't like or support the majority of crisis pregnancy centers. Pro-life medical centers position themselves outside of Planned Parenthoods but won't tell women when they're in the wrong building. They'll exaggerate 
demonstrate their medical knowledge, guilt and shame women into having their baby, but provide little or no follow-up resource after that woman has given birth. If you're a pro-life advocate, marry yourself to the truth. Be accountable. Don't be afraid of nuance and the genuine complications of life. There's a woman surrounding every fetus, and she deserves to be genuinely educated on her health, her body, and the resources you're about to not provide. Ben so generously promises. I would think that there are a lot of people out there like me who would give charity. If you know of this woman, tell me her name. I'm happy to give this woman. Even though he made this joke to condescend someone, he's actually onto something. I won't generalize all pro-life clinics, but some of them spend thousands of dollars providing sonograms that guilt women into having children. Then they offer little or no support after the woman gives birth. If these clinics were no for more than a guilt trip, such as pouring money into housing for single mothers or advocating for laws that offer provision, we could save more babies, you know, by helping women after the fetus is outside the womb. If your only objective is to save a fetus, but you're not listening to the genuine concerns heart, financial burdens of the woman carrying that fetus, you are potentially pushing low-income and abused women into dangerous, threatening situations. The second reason this clip sickens me is because Ben Shapiro flashed a picture of a baby that was potentially wanted. I believe Ben Shapiro chose this visual to intentionally mislead his audience. He makes no effort to clarify that 88% of abortions are in the first trimester, and half of those are in the first eight weeks. Also, Ben belittles the most difficult decision of a woman's life. Where in here exactly do you think it's okay to murder that kid because you have a personal convenience issue? Ben, could you please get some female friends and actually listen to them? I think it's disgusting that you perpetuate this lie that women go to abortion clinics because they just love being sluts and they're just down to party and they can't be bothered with a baby. I've never once in my life heard a woman tell me that story. And I talk to women Ben, commit yourself to truth and stop saying that lame lie over and over again. That said, I will be honest with you guys and admit that I was saddened to realize that partial birth abortion is not limited to medical conditions. There is a small percentage of women who wait too long. However, only 2% of abortions are partial birth, and those women have a variety of reasons, one of them being she couldn't get to the clinic on time, which is becoming more and more likely the more states are closing down abortion clinics and restricting access. In other cases, partial birth abortion is the devastating loss of someone's baby. You guys, the first time I saw this video, the top comment was from a father who had just lost his baby daughter. I wish I could find it. I can't. I tried looking for it. But I remember his story. This man was pregnant with his wife and 100% of their doctors recommended partial birth abortion. They believed fully that the baby was gonna die after being born and that it would be a very painful death. But this man was part of a religious community. They were praying, they were hoping for a miracle, and they went through with that birth. This man said, and I'm sorry it's graphic, that six months later, his daughter was in his arms and bled out from every orifice in her body and died. And his comment was begging Ben Shapiro to remove this video. He was telling him, don't you understand the nuance? Don't you understand I would do anything to take that moment back and have had that partial birth abortion, that it's necessary, that it would have saved me watching my daughter die in my arms. The kind of callous heartlessness and miseducation that Ben Shapiro is committed to for his cause of saving fetuses is so disrespectful. And I wonder whose baby is in that picture. Was that a child that someone desperately wanted but it had a medical condition? Do you even know the source of that photo? So when Ben flashed that picture and I saw that comment, I just have no respect for that. Ben Shapiro needs to acknowledge the nuance and devastation of partial birth abortion and stop pretending all abortion looks like that. Number two, Ben Shapiro cares more about dropping mics than actually solving problems. Well, Planned Parenthood doesn't prevent abortions. Mike Pence's religious convictions have led him to believe the fallacy that abortion can be stopped by simply closing down clinics. Emboldened by this lie and abstinence advocate Valerie Huber, President Trump cut more than 200 million in federal funds to teen pregnancy centers and proposed a budget which would allocate millions of dollars for abstinence-only education. Our government has
has already tried abstinence only and failed. The average age for initiating sexual activity has remained 17 or 18 years old since the early 1990s. The purity movement, abstinence education, and true love weights did not delay sexual activity. So while abstinence advocates live in a fairyland where not telling kids about sex helps them not have sex, California actually did something effective. In 1992, California's teen pregnancy rate was 157 per 1,000 teens, the highest rate in the nation. To combat this problem, the state launched an abstinence-only sex education effort, only to cancel the program in 1995. They found it had absolutely no effect on teens' decisions to start having sex. In 2003, lawmakers instead passed the California Comprehensive Sexual Health and HIV AIDS Prevention Education Act. The law forbade classes from promoting religious doctrine and said that all sex education had to be medically accurate, age-appropriate, and comprehensive. By 2005, California's teen pregnancy rate dropped to 75 per 1,000 teens, a more than 50% decline. Abortions dropped from 76 per 1,000 teens in 1988 to 26 per 1,000 in 2005. So why is Mike Pence breaking something we've been statistically effectively fixing? And this is one of the many reasons we need Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood gives away condoms and birth control. Most birth control is very cheap and readily available. I'm guessing Ben Shapiro has never lived in poverty, that he's never thought a $10 box of condoms was a lot of money, that his wife doesn't think $50 or $100 per month for birth control is a fortune. When I was a virgin who couldn't afford health insurance, Planned Parenthood was my only doctor. They provided cancer screenings, pap smears, and sex education. When I was married and broke, they provided me free birth control so I wouldn't have to worry about getting pregnant. If you do get an abortion, it costs five to seven hundred dollars. So no, women aren't conveniently using abortion as a means of birth control. Abortion costs a lot financially and emotionally. The worst thing we can do as a society is rob people of their sexual health. And guess what? That includes men. Men go to Planned Parenthood and need things too. Planned Parenthood has done nothing but protect, advocate for, and help me not get pregnant. We, as voters, are making them lose that power. Number three, Ben Shapiro shamelessly shames women. The unsuccessful decision that you made was the decision to have sex out of wedlock and then get pregnant out of wedlock. That decision is not alleviated by killing the rock. It's called marriage and the left undermined it. Shaming women for having premarital sex is misogynistic and ignorant. 80% of Christians are having unmarried sex, and CareNet, a nonprofit organization, found that 4 out of 10 women that had abortions were churchgoers at the time. I am not saying this justifies abortion. I am saying that we as religious people, Ben Shapiro being Jewish, need to stop pretending that our communities are not having sex. They are. And by the way, you know who's having sex with these immoral, loose Jezebel party animals? Men. Men are getting them pregnant. If Ben Shapiro truly wants less abortion in this country, he needs to acknowledge that 50% of the problem is men. He has the ear of so many men, and he wastes that opportunity by telling women they just need to keep their legs shut and everything will be fine. How about teaching these men how to lead in powerful, life-giving relationships? How about teaching them how to support a woman, even if you're not married to her, when she gets pregnant? I know so many women that were abandoned, abused, neglected during their pregnancies. Men are the reason women get abortions too. Women's health is the one issue in which we must protect ourselves with no promise that the man will protect us in return. For example, a man can beg a woman not to wear a condom and then ejaculate inside of her without her knowledge. And this woman may have not known that he ejaculated inside of her. She may have not had sex education and not known that's how you get pregnant. She could have not been able to afford the $50 morning after pill. Men need to be held sexually accountable. If Ben Shapiro truly wants less abortion, I wish he would stop focusing on arrogance and mic drops and actually look out at his college age audience. He has impressionable ears, people that are listening to him. He could use his voice for good. Women don't always need men, we're strong as hell, but in the abortion debate, we need you guys. We need men to step up and support us. On the opposite end of support, some men coerce, 
threaten and pressure women to get abortions. I was basically begging him to be there for me. I told him it doesn't feel right to me. Please don't make me do this. I don't want to do it. He said, Crystal, I love you and everything will be okay. You just have to do this for us. The feeling that I felt is undescribable. It just felt like my baby had been taken from me. Number four, Ben Shapiro loves generalizations. I love my God is Grey community because you guys are truth seekers. Being a part of the God is Grey community means that you honor and understand nuance without focusing on extremes. Ben Shapiro scares his fans into believing that women love abortion and Democrats want to push it all the way to the nine month mark and they just love it too. These are not true. Another generalization that Ben sells is that rape that results in pregnancy is so inconceivable and so rare that it's not even worth debating. to a young woman who's not married, who gets raped, but does not have access to an abortion. First of all, I, I do appreciate that you've created the saddest possible scenario for Olivia Newton. <laughs> um, is, she, is she also disabled? As long as we're creating imaginary victims. Significantly less than 1% of all abortions are performed on women who have been raped. According to my research, Ben's 1% statistic is only backed up by pro-life websites, and the last study done was in 1987. According to the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, one in five women have been raped in this country. Even more horrifying, rape is the most underreported crime. 8 out of 10 women knew their rapist, with 51.1% of the assaults done by an intimate partner and 40.8% by an acquaintance. So with those facts, the vast majority of women are being assaulted by people that they know that are their intimate partners. Just because they're not reporting it or they're not standing up to say, my husband raped me and that's why I'm pregnant, doesn't mean it's not happening. With one out of five of our daughters being assaulted in this country, your 1% statistic from 1987 doesn't hold up. In conclusion, I wish that Ben Shapiro and pro-lifers would stop looking at abortion through a black and white lens. This is gray. There are so many different factors that lead to an abortion. One I didn't mention is that this country is terrible with maternity leave. A lot of women will lose their jobs and be in more poverty if they can't have time off of work. We as spiritual people need to stop demonizing women that have had abortions or that will have abortions. We need to advocate for programs that will support them. We need to advocate for men stepping up, being sexually accountable. Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please support my Patreon if you can. Get your booties out there tomorrow and vote. Use your morality, your prayer, and your intellect, and your research to make informed decisions. I love you guys. God bless.